Hello, welcome to Microsoft Azure Data Engineer quiz. In this quiz, we'll have about 20 questions. This quiz will help you to prepare for data engineer interview. Let's start the quiz. Question one, which data processing framework will a data engineer use to ingest data onto cloud data platform in Azure? OLTP, ETL, or ELT? ELT is extract, load, and transform. ETL, extract, transform, and load. OLTP, online transaction processing. So ELT is a typical process for ingesting data from an on-premises database into the cloud. So data engineer used to ingest data onto cloud data platforms using ELT process. Option C is the right answer. Question two, the schema of what data type can be defined at query time? Structured data, Azure Cosmos database, or unstructured data? Unstructured data. The schema of unstructured data is typically defined at query time. This means that data can be loaded onto a data, flow, data platform in its native format. Option C is the right answer. Question three, duplicating customer content for redundancy and meeting service level agreements in Azure meets which cloud technical requirement? Maintainability, high availability, or multilingual support? High availability. High availability duplicates customer content for redundancy and meets SLAs in Azure. Example, if you deploy virtual missions in availability sets, then Azure distributes these virtual missions in different fault domains, multiple fault domains, and update domains. So even if one, one rack fails, you can still access virtual missions from the other fault domain. So high availability is the right answer. High availability duplicates customer content for redundancy and meets SLAs in Azure. Option B is the right answer. Question four, which data platform technology is a globally distributed multimodal database that can perform queries in less than a second? Azure SQL database, Azure Cosmos database, and Azure SQL data warehouse. So I have a couple of sessions available in my channel. So if you guys can go through those two sessions, Azure SQL database and Azure Cosmos database. So there I, I discuss more in detail about how Azure Cosmos database works and Azure SQL database work. Azure Cosmos database is, is a globally distributed and multimodal database. Option B is the right answer. Azure Cosmos database is a globally distributed multimodal database that can offer sub-second query performance. Please go through my Azure Cosmos database tutorial. So there I discussed about how to query an Azure Cosmos database and how Azure Cosmos database works. Option B is the right answer for question four. Question five, which data store is the least expensive choice when you want to store data but don't need to query? Azure Stream Analytics, Azure Data Bricks, or Azure Storage? We know Azure Storage where we can store a massive amount of data. So you don't have to query in Azure Storage. Azure Storage offers a massively scalable object store for data objects and file system services for the cloud. If you create a blob storage account, you can't directly query the data. You can access the file, but you can't query the data. So option C is the right answer, Azure Storage. 
Question six, which Azure service is the best choice to store documentation about a data source? Azure Data Factory, Azure Data Catalog, Azure Data Lake Storage. Azure Data Factory is Azure's cloud ETL service for scale out serverless data integration and data transformation. Azure Azure Data Lake Storage is built for running large scale analytics systems that require large computing capacity to process and analyze large amounts of data. So here we see in the question, which Azure service is the best choice to store documentation about a data source? So we can eliminate option A since it is a ETL tool and option B is analytics, option C is analytics. So option B is the right answer, Azure Data Catalog. Azure Data Catalog is a central place where an organization's users can contribute their knowledge. Together, they build a community of data sources that the organization wants. Question seven, which role works with Azure Cognitive Services, Cognitive Search, and the board framework. Data engineer, data scientist, and AI engineer. So we know all these Azure Cognitive Services, Cognitive Search, and board framework are related to artificial intelligence. So option C is the right answer. Artificial intelligence engineers work with AI services such as cognitive services, cognitive search, and bot framework. So option C is the right answer. Question eight, which Azure data platforms commonly used to process data in an ELT framework? Azure Data Factory, Azure Data Bricks, Azure Data Lake Storage. Let's talk about each data platform here. Azure Data Lake Storage is built for running large scale analytics systems that require large computing capacity to process and analyze large amounts of data. Azure Databricks is an Apache Spark based analytics platform optimized for the Microsoft Azure Cloud Services platform. Option a, Azure Data Factory is Azure Cloud ETL service for scale out serverless data integration and data transformation. So Data Factory is a ETL tool. Azure Data Factory is a cloud integration service that orchestrates the movement of data between various data stores. Option A is the right answer. Question nine, true or false? The Azure database for PostgreSQL Server firewall permits connections from any remote computer by default. True or false? The server firewall prevents all access until you specify which computers have permission. You can specify individual IP addresses or a range of IP addresses. So false is the right answer. Question 10, suppose you would like to set a retention period of 30 days for the data backups of your PostgreSQL database. How do you enable that? Option A, specify the retention period when you create your server. Option B, install the retention extension. Option C, run a script each day that removes backups that are older than 30 days. Option A is the right answer. Retention period is one of the settings that is configurable during creation. You can also adjust the retention period after you create your server if your requirements change. Option A is the right answer. Question 11. Say you need 10 PostgreSQL databases to support several projects. Which is the easiest way to create and manage all of them? Option A, 
using the Azure portal, option B using the Azure CLI. So when we want to create a multiple resources, Azure CLI or Azure PowerShell are the best options. So the Azure CLI enables you create scripts that automate creation and management tasks. So option B is the right answer using the Azure CLI. Question 12. Mike is creating an Azure Data Lake Storage Generation 2 account. He must configure this account to be able to process analytical data workloads for best performance. Which option should he configure when creating the storage account? On the basic tab, set the performance option to standard. On the basic tab, set the performance option to on. On the advanced tab, set the hierarchical namespace to enable. Option C is the right answer. Because if you want to enable the best performance for analytical workloads in data like storage generation 2, then on the advanced tab of the storage account creation, set the hierarchical namespace to enable. Option C is the right answer. Question 13. In which phase of big data processing is Azure Data Lake storage located? Injection, store, model, and serve. Option B is the right answer. Store is the phase in which Azure Data Lake storage resides for processing big data solution. Question 14. Your company has a Data Lake storage generation 2 account. If you want to upload a single file by using tool that you don't have to install or configure, which tool should you use? Azure Data Factory, Azure Storage Explorer, Azure Portal. Let's talk about how these services work. Azure Data Factory is an ETL tool where you can move your data from on-premises or from different source, example, Amazon or example, or Teradata, you can move a multiple files from source into the, into the cloud. And how Azure Storage Explorer works. Azure Storage Explorer, you can download and install it. And once you install Azure Storage Explorer, you can access the storage accounts from the cloud. Option C, Azure Portal. So here you can, if you want, a, if you want to upload a single file by using a tool that you don't have to install or configure. So Azure Storage Explorer, we have to install and Azure Data Factory is the ETL tool where you can move a multiple data bytes. You can move one file also, but, but normally we use Azure Data Factory to multiple data bytes, like you know, more than 50 or 100 are moving on-premises data. So Azure Portal is the right option. We don't have to install any tool or anything. We can just log into Azure Portal and just upload a single file. The Azure portal requires no installation or configuration. To upload a file, you only have to sign in and select an upload button. Option C is the right answer. Question 15. Your company has a data lake storage generation 2 account. If you want to move hundreds of files from Amazon S3 to Azure data lake storage, which tool should you use? Azure Data Factory, Azure Data Catalog, Azure Portal. So we just discussed if we, if you want to move a multiple files from a different source from your on-premises or a different source from Amazon S3 or anything Teradata Oracle. So Azure Data Factory is the right option. Azure Data Factory is the ETL tool. So here option A is the right answer. Azure Data Factory can efficiently move data from Amazon S3 to Azure Data Lake Storage. Option A is the right answer. Question 16. Which of the following technologies 
typically provide an injection point for data streaming in an event processing solution that uses static data as a source. Azure IoT Hub, Azure Blob Storage, Azure Event Hub. Azure Blob Storage is the right answer. Azure Blob Storage provides an injection point for data streaming in an event processing solution that uses static data as a source. Option B is the right answer. Question 17. Which job input consumes data streams from application at low latencies and high throughput? Azure Blob Storage, Azure Event Hubs, Azure IoT Hub. So there is one video module available in my channel about Azure Event Hubs, how it works. Event Hubs consumes data streams from applications at low, at low latencies and high throughput. Option B is the right answer. Please go through that Azure Event Hubs in my channel. That helps to understand Azure Event Hubs. Question 18. The stream analytics query language is a subset of which query language? T-SQL, WQL, JSON. We know Azure Cosmos database works in JSON format, but here we see in the question, we see the stream analytics query language is a subset of which query language? So T-SQL, the query language you use in stream analytics is based heavily on T-SQL. Question 19, which of the following terms refers to the compute scale that is used in a data warehouse in Azure Synapse Analytics? RTU, DW, DTU. DW stands for Data Warehouse Unit. It is the measure of compute scale that is assigned to a data warehouse in Azure Synapse Analytics. So we discussed in Azure Synapse Analytics tutorial so there is one good video session available on Azure Synapse Analytics, how it works. So please go through that Azure Synapse Analytics. So option B is the right answer. DW refers to a data warehouse unit. It is the measure of compute scale that is assigned to a data warehouse in Azure Synapse Analytics. Question 20, what is the default port that is used to connect to an Azure Synapse Analytics Data Warehouse? TCP port 1344, UDP port 1433, TCP port 1433. The default port that is used to connect to an Azure Synapse Analytics Data Warehouse is TCP port 1433. Option C is the right answer. Please go through Azure Synapse Analytics that is available in my channel. Please go through that Azure Synapse Analytics to understand how these uh, analytics work. Question 21. Mike is the data engineer for Contoso and has a data warehouse created with a database name Crystal. Mike created a master key followed by a database scope credential. What should he create next? An external table, an external data source, a physical table. An external data source. After the master key and the database scope credential are created, Mike should create an external data source that contains a URL to the blog blob location and the name of the database scope credential. Option B is the right answer. We covered all 21 questions in this data engineer quiz. Please, uh, if you have any questions or concerns, please post it in the comments. If you like this video, please subscribe and share the channel. Thank you.